Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Sukhmanan Show. Let's get started. In this episode, we'll be talking about the fabrication process in detail. But before we do that, here's some interesting Indian news from this week. Uber has actually pledged to go completely electric by the year 2030. So this completely electric scheme is only going to be limited to US, Canada and parts of Europe by the year 2030. And they want to roll out the same throughout the world by the year 2040. So they are not actually going to you know, incentivize the drivers to trade their gasoline vehicles with battery electric ones. So what they are going to do instead is they are going to charge extra from the consumer itself. So if you were to take an electric vehicle or a hybrid electric vehicle for that matter for a ride then you will have to pay a dollar or 1.5 cents more than that actually. So this Uber green surcharge has actually been started out in 15 cities of the US wherein they get the option of choosing to ride any uh, electric or battery electric vehicle. That's not it. Uber is actually claiming to roll out close to 800 million dollars in investments to help their drivers to make this trade off. So it's not like they're completely letting them out. So at some point Uber is helping their own drivers to make this shift. Moving on, Google Maps is becoming more and more EV friendly. What do I mean by EV friendly? So the beta version is already having these features, the ones which I'm going to mention now. Uh, so what is happening is Google Maps will actually give you a battery indicator based on the route that you choose. And it will also show you fast charging options that are available on the go. It will also give you the option of adding in charging stations. So you can add a charging station and based on that it will tell you whether you can make this trip or not. That's not it. So once uh, based on the battery indicator of your vehicle, it will also tell whether you can complete the trip without getting charged or not. So Google is adding all of these features to make sure that your ride is more EV friendly and it also helps to make a parallel shift from ICs to EVs because Google Maps is something that everyone uses. Even though this uh, rollout was done by Tesla wherein you have this option of uh, it telling you, the car itself telling you that you know this is the range that I can offer and this is what you can cover in this much distance, this is the battery percentage you have which was deemed revolutionary. Not everyone owns a Tesla in this world and it's not the only EV maker even though it's the most successful one till date. Google Maps is something that everyone uses. So this move is going to be really, really beneficial because once people start seeing such moves rolled out, then uh, they actually try to make a shift and start researching about what EV is. This will in turn help build a better EV ecosystem in the world. Moving on, the government of India plans to add in more than 69,000 charging stations in the existing petrol pumps. So the proposed move earlier was that they'll have uh, one place for charging station in all the new petrol pumps that are coming up. But uh, what the government also decided was um, that secondary. What will happen for the new part, it will happen. But when you have to take in consideration the ones which are already present, the petrol pumps which are already existing, so they thought that it would be great and better if you could also give provision for one electric vehicle charging station there. And uh, it will also make people more, uh, what do you say, enlightened about the fact that you know even petrol banks are opting for electric vehicles charging points. So it's high time that we start making the shift. They also want company operated uh, banks to give this provision. We'll have to wait and watch how this one goes. What is fabrication? Fabrication means make something from a raw material. So if we consider a metal fabrication process, the raw material used here is unsurprisingly a metal. So the fabrication uses those materials which has been already processed into a usable raw material form. These raw materials can be in any form like it can be in a metal sheet form, pipes, rods, etc. The assembly differs from fabrication. So the question arises, what is assembly and how it is different from fabrication? So what is assembly? Assembly is that which uses the products which is manufactured for a particular purpose. 
However, this assembly is an integral operation of an art of fabrication. Material selection is one of the integral part of the fabrication process. So this helps us determine whether a material that you choose is desirable or undesirable for your specified application. So what are the factors that make a material suited for this? I'll name some here. So it could be the mechanical properties, thermal properties, its degradation, it is cost and availability, and also whether its weight is suitable for our job or not. We at Team Inferno look very closely at all these properties before we choose what material goes into the chassis. So we actually have chosen aluminium, like mentioned in earlier episodes. We use aluminium to fabricate our chassis. And why aluminium? All of you must be wondering. If you see, aluminium is one of the most robust materials present out there. And at the weight that aluminium uh, gives us the options of, it's really really cool because it's said that aluminium replaces, 1 kg of aluminium replaces close to 2 kg of cast iron or steel used. So if you were to use, uh, that's the weight reduction factor of aluminium, you can see how beneficial it would be for making or building a fuel efficient car for that matter. But if you're looking at aluminium, it's very vague, it's very broad. There are actually grades of aluminium present. And uh, what makes any grade important is the components that go or the materials that go into the composition of this. So if you look at aluminium 6061, the one which we use, uh, it is composed mainly of magnesium and silicon. The closest uh, grade that comes to this is 6063. They have very similar properties because they have similar composition again. But when you compare and see very closely, 6061 has better corrosion resistance better cracking properties and uh, that's one of the main reason why uh, we've chosen 6061 over 6063 and if you also see 6061 is not that easily available so you'll have to get checked with the manufacturer beforehand itself to place your order and make sure you get it beforehand. So when fabricating a product we require several operations to be performed on it, like thread profile, holes, etc. These are time consuming and a delicate process. So for this we use different machines like lathe machines, drilling machine, milling machine, surface grinders, etc. So let's have a look on some important machines that we use in our workshop. First one is lathe machine. See, these lathe machines are mainly used for rotating a workpiece, so that several operations can be performed on it. These multipurpose machines are used for different functions like thread cutting, holes, surface finish, to remove excess material, etc. These are used, also used for drilling. Second one is milling machine. So, milling machines are used for rotary cuts and the main purpose of using this machine is to remove the access material or undesired materials. So third one is drilling machine. Drilling machine is blessed to workshop and to the world for various scopes. Easy to install and easy to replace is one of the main feature of this and why so it is so famous. There are several operations can be performed using drilling machines but the main purpose is used to drill a hole. Along with these machines we also use some important tools like hammers, mallets, screwdrivers etc. So we follow some important steps to keep them safe like placing them properly, inspecting wear and damage, lubricating them instantly and various other methods. So once the raw material undergoes all the processes mentioned earlier, uh, you just then look for means for putting these together. So if you see that way, one cannot look beyond welding because welding is a very robust and clean process and for that reason there are actually many types of welding that are present. See, they are the thick welding, the pig welding, the metal arc welding and so on. If I keep naming them, there are plenty actually. Uh, again, like pre 
mentioned earlier, we use the uh, TIG welding, that is the tungsten and gas welding at the end. No? I will just give you a brief about why we use the same because it uh, helps us to achieve uh, very clean and precise welds. It is very uh, safe for the surroundings. There is not a lot of harmful radiations that come out of this process. And also it is one of the very few processes that actually helps fuse many metals together. So TIG welding is very good on that aspect as well. Now you guys must be wondering what is the principle behind TIG welding or tungsten or gas welding. Just to put things into perspective, here is what TIG welding does. It makes use of a arc that is produced to fuse two metals. And uh, in the process it also uses an infusible tungsten uh, rod for the same. The welder would also be adding an external filler material during this entire process. And why this and where this inner dust comes into picture is it actually forms a outer coating out of uh, this entire process so that there is no oxide formation or any flux formation for that matter. So that is why thick welding is very clean and precise. And once this is done, uh, you have your weld produced, which is a very precise and clean weld, which is uh, used in almost many many industrial applications, be it sheet metal or any other types of metals for that matter. Cost estimation is directly related with project budget. Project cost is the budget available to complete the overall project. Cost estimation helps us to find out the project risks and it tells whether we have to go for alternatives or other requirements. The main factors which affect the project budget are materials, manpower, equipments, service providers, premises and various others. There are several cost estimation techniques available which helps us to design the corresponding resources. Resource costing is one of them. In resource costing what we do is, we list up all the factors or the resources available like manpower, equipments, service providers and various others. First we list up, then we sum up the cost. We use this resource costing for large and complicated projects. Moving on to the safety tip, uh, today I will be briefing about some good and safe electric practices that one has to follow and I will be breaking this down into four different parts or segments. The first one being the grounding, the second one being the guard, the third one being the special design features and the fourth one being the pattern charts. So what I mean by grounding is make sure that there is any handheld equipment or uh, any motor equipment for that matter, make sure you ground that. And also if there is any equipment that has or requires metal contact with electrical parts, then make sure that is grounded as well. And uh, so basically that anything that requires metal contact, make sure that is grounded. The next one is the guarding part. So if there is any equipment that requires 50 volts or more, make sure you put up signs saying that you know, uh, this is requiring 50 volts and it gives out 50 volts basically so that uh, no one even comes close to that accidentally. And uh, if anyone is entering into a room that is uh, having live wires or some electrical equipment that is going heavy, then make sure you put up signs there as well so that the person is aware of what's happening in the room. And the next thing is make sure you always uh, the 600 volts or the source from where the electricity is given throughout the workshop or any other industrial workplace, make sure that is CD or even uh, protected by a system which is which can be locked basically. Next is a special design. Uh, what I mean by special design is uh, don't use any electrical equipment until specifically designed for these conditions. Uh, the conditions would be explosive temperatures, don't do using of uh, any of these electrical equipments there. Wet and damp conditions, that's like a basic thought, everyone should have that beforehand itself. And uh, even if there's uh, any sort of uh, excessive temperatures in the industrial workplace, make sure you try to avoid as many electrical equipment as you can. The next is the battery charge. Uh, one has to make sure that you know uh, you follow some of the tips that I mentioned to 
ensure safe and sound uh, battery charging procedure. Make sure there is enough uh, vent caps present so that the heat that is coming out from the charger or uh, getting to the equipment that is getting charged is vented easily. That's one. And make sure there is almost a minimum of 25 feet uh, difference between the closest water source that can be used for eye wash or even uh, hand wash or shower for that matter. So make sure your battery equipment and the charging facility is moved away from that front. So no water sources in and around the battery charging equipment. And uh, once the charging is underway, make sure that you keep checking on a timely basis to make sure that you know it doesn't overheat or it doesn't charge more than what is required. So that's it for today guys. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you in the next episode uh, with some new and exciting content. Until then, think, sketch and execute.